Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you excerpts taken from seven recorded live lessons on a series in which we took a look at painting a boat on the water. In this lesson series we take a look at painting the illusion of water of course and how to use the medium gouache. Gouache is of course opaque watercolor and it has its own unique set of characteristics. Now if you want to learn more about how you can access this complete lesson series, it's part of our membership program over at TheVirtualInstructor.com forward slash members. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the following excerpts. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we've had enough prep time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to define the horizon line and just kind of look up here at the top and I'm just kind of making a comparison between the negative space and the reference. All right, so we've got a little bit of a diagonal that goes back up. So I'm looking at these angles. I think one of the common mistakes people make, um, you know, all of us make, is we tend to make things flat, straight across, or straight up and down, when there's actually, a, most of the times that's not really what's happening in the image. And what the result is when we do that, when we draw things like that, is uh, things look very, very stagnant. Okay, just for my own benefit, I'm just going to kind of sketch out the reflection, where it's going to be. You don't have to do this, of course, but this is just going to help me compositionally figure out where the position of the boat is here. And I also want to make sure that I'm, I'm changing up the variety. I've got a variety of different sizes since I'm including so many things. I think I'm going to actually put the sailboat back here and lift up some of the graphite um, and just make it a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to bring this right across the top. The thing about gouache that you have to be careful of is it dries a little bit differently than how it is first put on. And you'll notice this. The colors can draw a little bit of a different value. And you can see as we add some of that water, some of the color gets reactivated, allowing us to pull that color down. On. And we'll just overlap. Overlap the sky here. We'll pull some of the brush strokes up just slightly. Go back in and just pull a few indications of some of the treetops extending out just a little bit. Some of these shadows go all the way up. All right, just going to fill in some of those windows with that same color. And we'll get a little bit more paint on the brush now. And I know there's a lot of darker values underneath this pier over here, but I'm going to go ahead and get some of the lighter colors on there. We can paint right over the top. I'm actually going to drop a little bit further down. Create a little bit of a transition there. We're not going to be too tied to the reference here as we're doing this. Okay, so this is definitely not an approach you would take with traditional watercolor. You wouldn't just throw paint on on the surface like we're doing with these real thick applications. <laughs> Covering up a lot of the white on the paper. You'd, you'd never think of doing that. Still working with a larger brush here just to get as much color in place as quickly as possible. Let's go ahead and pull a few of these ripples out. With the larger brush. And then we'll just allow that to kind of streak right across here. And of course, we want to make sure we keep it kind of as straight as possible. 
it's these variations in value and tone that are going to kind of create the illusion of depth and, of course, the illusion of water, too. So we got another boat over here, and I kind of chopped some of the bottom of it off, so just drop a little bit further down. And I'm just going to pull a few lines out, just like how you would think you would paint these marks. <laughs> And there's a lot of complexity in these ripples. So don't get obsessed with, uh, you know, saying, oh, well, it's got to be perfect. It's got to look just like the ripples. No. But there are some subtle things that happen out here. So we'll allow for some variation in the brush stroke. You can get skinnier. Maybe you're seeing this already, or maybe you're not, but uh, this is going to be a gradual process building up the small things that happen here in the water. And we're just going to be patient and allow that to happen. So, you know, we I can see that there's some lines that are created there and, uh, there's some space in between them and they're all kind of flowing in a, a generalized, generally a similar direction. Um, so that's what I'm trying to mimic here. It's one of my pet peeves as a teacher really is to see other teachers tell people that there's one way to do things and, and that's the right way. And there's only one right way. And that's, yeah, you know, that's the great thing about art. One of the wonderful things about art is there's not always a right way, but sometimes there's multiple right ways. And of course, an additional bit of color over here is going to add more depth and interest as well. Okay, so I'm just looking for hints where the value gets a little bit darker. Let it come out a little bit further. And let's just go right along the top because there's some light that's getting on the top part of the back portion of the boat. Slowly things will start to emerge and make more sense. All right, there's a little bit of reflection up here on the front end, reflecting from what's happening in the water up there, or what's happening in the boat. It's reflected in the water. Okay, underneath the boat where it meets, we use some of this darker value that we've got on our brush. There we go. Let's add that to this boat here. Both of these boats are a little bit closer. They have a little bit more of a defined shadow underneath them. Okay, a little bit more white on the brush. All right, there's, uh, of course, these little things on top of... <laughs> On top of the boat, it looks like maybe some type of uh, Doppler or radar or something like that. So I'm going to put a few indications of that. Not, not many details, just a few blotches of color up there. And then across the front, we've got quite a bit of a lighter value of that blue. So just still sticking with this kind of warmer gray here, we can always uh, make some of the values a little bit darker and we'll, we'll likely need to do that. But right now we're just trying to get a good understanding of some of the details that are on here. You know, we're just working slowly and deliberately. Now it's gonna get a little bit lighter right above this darker line that we created here. This is gonna 
allow us to kind of clean that up. And let's do some, some of that back here on the back edge because it feels like really the darkest area on the side of the boat is kind of in the middle here. So we'll grab some of that lighter gray. And you can spread this up as high as you want or or let it let it stay close to the water. But I definitely want to include some of the oranges in there and maybe exaggerate them a little bit like I'm doing here because the water is blue. And of course, orange and blue are compliments. So, okay, back here on the back edge, there is a little bit of a, a piece. And this sticks out a little bit. And there are some areas where we'll make the orange a little bit stronger, but for right now we'll just get this initial color in place. It goes all the way up to the blue line. We're going to go back and make some of the contrast a little bit stronger by making some of the values a little bit darker on this part of the boat, but it's not a bad start here. All right, so let's make the little thing that is right here using that same color. So this is just the medium value blue with just a touch of white mixed in. So even though it's a darker value than what we've got in place, it is still lighter than the primary blue by itself, if that makes sense. Just pull them straight up there, barely touching the paper there. And we can add a couple more details here and there. I want to have enough paint on my brush. Well, I really need to have enough water in my brush, is what I should say here, that the paint flows relatively easily, but I get a good amount of color uh, when I do run the brush over the surface. Because, of course, acrylic would dry, uh, acrylics would dry probably too fast to be able to accomplish something like that. So now we've got a, a nice warm shadow that's underneath here, and it really makes the top part, this roof, feel like it stands out a little bit more. Next. And of course, these aren't the exact numbers on the, on the boat, but just a little bit, a few numbers here will add just a little bit more interest. And then as we go up, we're going to just going to let this these colors fade out. But what one of the magical things about gouache, I don't, magical is probably the wrong term, uh, but <laughs> one of the great things about gouache is once we get, if we want to create a fade going on here. So if we've got some of the colors up here and we want to tone them down a little bit, it's going to be really easy to do that with just some water over the top. Okay, this is a little bit more brown. Again, just taking colors that are already there on the on the palette there. And some of these colors need to get a little bit darker as we go up and a little bit more neutral. And then with a smaller brush, we can just go in here and start just giving some hints of shadow here and there. All right, so let's bring this up a little bit higher than we think we'll need to bring it. And then, of course, every once in a while, we want to kind of see the big picture and look at everything in totality. So I'll stop every once in a while and just look at what I'm creating down here in relationship to the rest of the image. Because, of course, I don't want to get too carried away. You don't want to just have dark lines outlining all of the rocks. So even though we want to create somewhat of a pattern, we want to make sure that we don't get too robotic about it. So a little bit of a darker tone here. Just going to let that happen here. And we'll just bring a little bit of it down to a little bit further down. All right, then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of water and I'm going to keep my paper towel handy here. And I'm going to try to reactivate this area and pull it right up into 
the next area above it. And then we're just going to keep pulling our strokes across with just a little bit of water in the brush. You want to let it go over these rocks or the indications of the rocks down there. So I'm going to let a few of the open spaces happen. So we'll add a little bit of water and, and pull the color and then drop down a little bit further and do it again. And we'll add a few more. So as I mentioned, I'm kind of just going to make ripples to try to make them make sense with the image, not necessarily with the reference. So this ripple that I'm adding right here does not exist in the reference. Okay, as these ripples come out, I'm going to start making them a little bit lighter. So I can put down the color initially and then just with some water, thin it out. And it might still seem pretty strong even right now, but it will, it will fade and get lighter as it dries. And then I'm just going to touch the surface. in areas. Now one of one or two of these is not going to make a whole lot of sense. So if you just get a couple on there and you're like, well this doesn't look like reflections, well that's because you got only one or two. So we're just going to put a few here and there. Just try to give the impression that there's some there's some sparkle in that water. Now, if you're concerned about the tape not being able to, to pull off like this at the beginning of the process, you can always tape your pant leg or something like that and just get some of that adhesive off before you apply it to the paper. Comes up. So there we go. We are finally finished with this series. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.